Hello again, grade sevens. In today's science lesson, we are going to talk about expansion and contraction of our three primary states of matter, that being solids, liquids, and gases. And we're also going to describe both the shape and the volume of these three different states of matter. Learning outcome is to investigate and describe the effects of heating and cooling on the volume of different materials and identify applications of these effects. So let's start off by giving a definition for the shape of a substance. In this diagram, we have our three primary states of matter in container a, you'd have a solid. In container B, you'd have particles that make up a liquid. And then in container C, you'd have particles that make up a gas. The shape of a substance is the external appearance of an object or a substance. What we're going to do is we're going to describe the shape using one of the following two words. Okay, so one word is we're going to use the word definite. If something has a definite shape, it means it does not change. We also have the word indefinite. which means that the shape can change. So let's look at our three primary states of matter and talk about the shape, the way that they actually appear. So if I have this block, this could be like, a, I don't know, like it could be like a brick or something. I'm just showing the particles that make up the brick. Is it shape definite or is it indefinite? So definite means that the shape does not change. Indefinite means it can change. Well, unless you take like a hammer and like break the, like crack the brick in half, its shape is not going to change. Therefore, we would say that solids have a definite shape. Their shapes do not change. Well, what about liquids and gases? Well, if we, for example, had two containers, so let's say we had one that had like a flat bottom to it, and we had one that had a kind of like a, like a bowl, like a rounded bottom to it. And let's take some liquid. I'll just uh, draw it as green. If I took this liquid in this container that has like the flat bottom, and then I put it into the container that is this bowl shape, well, the actual shape of the liquid would change. The reason it changes is because the liquid actually takes the shape of the container. So if the shape of the liquid is changing, then we would say that its shape is indefinite. And it turns out gases would do the same thing, although some gases we can't actually see, but gases will also take the shape of the container. Therefore, we'd say liquids and gases have an indefinite shape as they take the shape of the container they are placed in. Let's also look at a physical quantity called volume. Volume is the amount of space occupied by a substance or an object. And again, we want to try to describe the shape based on whether it is definite, which means it can change, or whether it is indefinite. For that brick in container A, I mean, you can manipulate the brick around, like you could uh, rotate it so it's on a different edge, but it still occupies the same amount of space. So that doesn't change. Same with the liquid. Even if you take it and you pour it into a different container, well, it just takes up the exact same amount of space, although its shape is just a little bit different. Gases are where we can talk about the volume being indefinite. For gases, we can take a gas and we can compress it. So, for example, if I have like... A, a bunch of particles and make up a gas. When I say compress it, it means we can kind of like force it into a smaller area. 
So apply some pressure where the particles are now occupying a smaller amount of space. They could be like a lot closer. So that'd be a compressed gas. Therefore, solids and liquids have a definite volume. Doesn't really matter what you do. They always occupy the same amount of space. And gases have an indefinite volume because it is possible to compress them into a smaller space or a smaller volume. Now what we want to look at is what effect does heating or cooling of an object or a substance have on the amount of space that it occupies. And we'll break this into two different categories, that being expansion and contraction. Okay, so this is just a regular lab thermometer. Regular lab thermometer typically has some colored alcohol in it. Expansion occurs when the temperature of a substance or an object increases. Well, what would happen if you actually took this thermometer and you put it into like a boiling hot beaker? Well, what I would expect to see is, oops, let's uh, grab the red color just so we can be consistent with the colored alcohol. Usually the colored alcohol is red. Okay, so right now I think the colored alcohol is like going up to about this level. If you put this into a beaker of really, really hot water, then I would expect the colored alcohol to go to a higher reading, which would give me a higher temperature reading. So what's happening in that situation is the colored alcohol is expanding. But what does expand, expansion mean? When you heat up the substance, in this case, the colored alcohol, the particles in the substance are going to move faster. They're moving faster because you're giving more energy to them. And if you have more kinetic energy, your particles do move quicker. When the particles move faster, the particles tend to move apart. So if you have like a bunch of particles in a substance, okay, and they're just kind of like not moving around a whole, uh, very fast, and you give them suddenly a bunch of energy, then they have a lot more kinetic energy. And if they have more kinetic energy, they're going to buzz around a lot more. And if they buzz around a lot more, it's likely that there's going to end up being more space between them. If the space between the particles increases, then that's going to result in the volume of that substance increasing. So again, going back to the colored alcohol, what happens if you put it into that beaker of hot water, well, the hot water would transfer some thermal energy from the water to the colored alcohol. That would cause the particles in the colored alcohol to gain more kinetic energy, which would make them move faster. When they move faster, the particles move apart if the particles move apart, then the volume of that substance, the colored alcohol, would go up. Here's another example of this. You may have noticed that when you're out for a walk, that the sidewalks have these little tiny gaps between them. There is an important reason for this. When you have these little tiny gaps, and if, say, you went for for example, from like winter to summer. So winter to summer, my average temperature is obviously going to be a lot warmer. Well, if you go from winter to summer, then what you'd have is the particles that make up the concrete would start to move faster. If they move faster, then there's going to be more space between the particles. If there's more space between the particles. And what happens is that the, the volume of the concrete is going to increase. So if we had like two sidewalk blocks side by side, they, they usually have these little tiny gaps in them. The reason being is that if the temperature increases, then there's some room for the, the sidewalk to move into. If we didn't have that little gap, like say for example, we started off with the sidewalk blocks just side by side, and then they expanded, well, they kind of like crash into each other. And what that would do is that would cause the sidewalk to break. So these little tiny intervals that you have, these little uh, spaces between the sidewalk blocks just give room for the, the concrete to expand into. And then hopefully the concrete wouldn't crack as much. Although, as I'm sure you've seen walking in the sidewalk, there still are a lot of cracks on 
the sidewalk or on roads. Contraction is just the reverse process. So in contraction, we have the temperature of a substance decreasing. If the temperature of a substance decreases, then our particles lose kinetic energy. They'd likely lose it to like the surrounding environment. If you lose kinetic energy, your particles then move slower. So they speed down. If particles speed down, well, they're not buzzing around as much anymore. And it turns out they come closer together. I guess one way you could think about this, although I don't know if this is technically like the complete correct explanation of it. So if you have your particles and they lose a bunch of kinetic energy, they're not buzzing around anymore. We talked about in the structures and forces unit, how there's this gravitational force between all things in the universe, which means that all these particles would want to attract to each other. So if they all attract to each other, then the particles would come closer together and then the space between them would decrease. If the space between the particles decreases, then the volume of my substance is going to decrease. One example of this is I have a metallic plate and this metallic plate has a tiny hole in it. And I wanna take the steel bolt and I kind of wanna just fasten it into the hole. But let's say right now that the steel bolt just does not fit. So like, what are some different things you could do that would actually result in this bolt fitting into the hole? Well, one thing you could do is you could take this steel bolt and then you could cool it. If you could cool it, then its volume would go down. If the volume goes down, then because again, when you cool the steel bolt, the particles within the bolt would move closer to each other, resulting in a decrease in volume. Then you might be able to get it to fit inside the hole. And then later on, once the bolt, uh, the bolt heats up, then the bolt would expand and it would be fit very nice and snugly in place. Another thing you could do too, is if you wanted to try to get this bolt into the hole that did not fit, you could also take the metallic plate and you could heat this thing up. What happens when you heat it up? Well, the volume of the plate is going to increase. The important thing though, is that if you have this plate, if its volume increases, that actually is going to increase the size of the hole. So your size of the hole gets a little bit bigger and then you could fit the steel bolt in place. So it's a couple of ways you could actually get that bolt into that hole. I did want to point out a major exception to this rule. So it's not true for every single substance that if you cool it, the substance contracts. In fact, there's a major exception to this rule. Water, which is the most common substance we have on the earth. <laughs> I think it's the most common substance anyways. If not the most common substance, like definitely one of the most abundant substances. It turns out that if you freeze water, you cool it down and it turns into ice, specifically when it undergoes that phase change into ice, the water actually uh, expands when it turns into ice. You may have noticed this, for example, if uh, you've taken a can of pop and it's at like room temperature and you don't want to drink it at room temperature. So you're like, okay, I'll just put it into the freezer and then uh, I'll get the, the, the pop to cool down. And then you forget about it. And then you come back a day later and the pop cans exploded. Well, the pop contains a lot of water in it. So what happened is that when you put it into the freezer, the temperature of the, of the water and the pop decreased. But when it underwent that phase change in the ice, it actually made the ice occupy more volume. And since, since it had nowhere else to go, it just causes the pop can to, to kind of like buckle and, uh, and, ex and explode in a way. So just be aware that, yeah, water is one major exception to this rule when it turns into ice. If you just decrease the temperature of water, like for example, like 20 degrees Celsius to 10 degrees Celsius, then the rule would be true. So the exception is only, uh, is, is, is only true when you actually do have the phase change into ice. 
All right, so that's it for this lesson. And you can complete the assignment called Expansion and Contraction to reinforce this material. And I'll talk to you next time.